What's going on, you bunch of big old Xbox fanboys? It's me, Mr. Xbox fanboy here, talking about Sony's little handheld that could, the PS Vita, and why you need to own one in 2021, and why I bought one, this was gifted to me, in 2021. Now, you may be wondering, Maddie, what's the urgency? This is the year we're talking Nintendo Switch Pro rumors. Why would I want a Vita? Well, a report came out from the gamer that the PS3, PSP, and PS Vita digital storefronts are being shut down in the coming months, which means that the physical media is going to be on the rise and this bad boy here is a digital ticking time bomb so i want to show off some of my collection the prices i paid for them and talk about what i think is one of the most wonderful consoles of all time so for those of you who have clicked on this video this is our default video for those of you who watch all my content this is our default video for when someone says maddie's an xbox fanboy send them my way here this is for you thank you so much for tuning in all right let's talk about the ps vita in 2021 so Physical media is going to be on the rise with prices because everyone's going to be storming in trying to download everything digitally onto the memory cards here, which are very pricey for this console. But why would you want a PS Vita? Is it really that good of a system? Well, I'll be honest. This is one of my favorites of all time. I've been playing one since 2014. This is my Persona 4 Dancing All Night import that my girlfriend got me for our three-year anniversary. What a hell of a gift. She scored big time with this one. That is when you wife them up. But anyway, point being is this was phenomenal, and it really reinvigorated my love with the platform. So I've collected some new games. I've also had a bunch of games collected already for my Vita. I want to show them off, tell you all the price I paid for them, and what they're going for now because it may shock you and the same will go for of course the PSP we're gonna briefly talk about this one here I already have a video of me buying a PSP last year alongside 50 plus games I got it for about 200 bucks this is the Darth Vader PSP this thing is awesome but anyway PSP games are pretty cheap right now I've got a couple right next to me this came in the bundle with the $200, but separately it goes for about 10 bucks. This was actually $50 complete in box. And then this one was about 15 to 20. Uh, a lot of PSP games that you think would be highly sought after and a lot of money are really not. So the most I've ever spent was on Valkyrie Profile Lenneth, uh, which once again, $50 isn't that bad, but I only can imagine as games become inaccessible, the reason the Vita ties into this is because you can download a lot of PSP games. So even PSP prices are going to go up because you'll no longer be able to download them on current platforms, previous ones. So you only have the physical media. So just keep that in mind that those prices are going to go up. But like I said, in this video, I really wanted to put all of my attention on the PS Vita. It's a system I'm incredibly passionate about. I love using it. There's nothing better than getting trophies on the go. And also it's home to a lot of my favorite games that I've ever played. And some of my favorite series were introduced here on this platform. So I'm very thankful for it. We're going to go through some of them. So with that, if you like the Vita, you like gaming in general. That's what this is all about, right? We talk about Xbox and now we're talking about the Vita. You like gaming in general. This is the place to be. We got good energy here. We got a good crowd. So thank you so much for tuning in and do consider subscribing if you maybe like what we're doing here. Okay, let's start off with an import. So this is Gundam Breaker 3 Break Edition. I paid $60 for this one. As you can see, it is still sealed. Uh, more notably, though, is that the rating is missing, which is something that you don't see unless it's an Asian English import. My copy of Final Fantasy IX actually had the same thing. Like, it's a beautiful box art, but there's no rating on the box. So this is something that I think will once again become highly sought after. This is a very niche game, and that's kind of the name of the game for Vita. You're going to find a lot of games that you never heard of. Like, I'd say I'm an enthusiast. I pay very close attention to the entire gaming sphere. And I never heard of Gundam Breaker 3, but it's this action-packed beat-em-up with mechs and stuff, and it looks incredible. It's also on the PS4, but hey, for me, gaming on the go, gaming in bed, that stuff just speaks to my soul. So having that, like this on the Vita, is very, very exciting. This comes from Bandai, too, which I didn't know they were really avid supporters of the Vita. But once again, this is 60 bucks sealed, and I can imagine games like this are going to only hop up in price. I do have some examples of games I owned and have owned for a very long time that I bought for about 20 bucks that are now around the 80 to 100 dollar range so we'll get into those in a little bit this is another game that's really popped up in price this is East 8 Lacrimosa of Dana now you're noticing a trend here and I know some of you are not interested in these games you're more western RPG but I'm telling you pay attention to the JRPG scene it's getting so much better now's a perfect time 
to get involved. So East is from Falcom and they made the Trails of series. They made, of course, the East series. This is more of an action RPG. You can manage your own town in the meantime while completing quests. And I've heard really good things about this. I bought this at PAX East last year for 40 bucks. And right there, when I saw it for $40, I said, this is a steal. I bought it, and at the time, it was about 90 on eBay. It's only gone up since then. So I got this for an extremely good deal. It's why I miss conventions, because the other thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a stranglehold put on a lot of these games. So while this may actually be, I don't know, like 70 bucks, 80 bucks sealed, um, these games will go up in price, because right now we don't have alternatives. So you have to go digitally. You can't go to a convention. I'm going to be honest. You can haggle at a convention and say like, hey, I'll give you 60. I got 60 cash. You can pocket the whole thing. I just want 10 bucks off. That type of stuff cannot happen on the internet. Also, I'm not a sealed collector, so stuff like this uh, will get unpacked at some point in time. I'm more interested in collecting games I'm going to play, so just keep that stuff in mind. Uh, the next newest addition to my collection for the Vita uh, was one of their launch games, Unit 13. Never played this one. Uh, I went ahead and decided to pick it up because I got the cartridge for about 15 bucks. And as you can see, what's kind of cool is it comes with an online pass. I uh, haven't seen one of these in years. But um, anyway, I bought the cartridge for 15 and the box for about 10, which is not too bad of a deal um, when you take a look at the Vita scene again, because getting things complete in box is more pricey than you'd imagine because. The game's barely sold as it was. Uh, there really were very few successes. So to have something like this is pretty cool because I've never played it and I had the Vita since a little bit after its launch. Now, here's the trade-off, right? The Vita had very great exclusive games. I feel like they did all the right things, just PlayStation didn't market it enough. And there were a couple of other shortcomings that kind of led to it becoming a Achilles heel for it. Um, but one of the games that drew a lot of people to the platform was one of my favorites of all time, Persona 4 Gold. And this was a remaster of Persona 4. I've made a ton of videos on the channel about this. We just talked about Persona on Xbox about a couple of days ago. Um, and so this was originally a PS Vita exclusive. It's now been ported to the PC. Uh, so in a way, it sort of hit the price of this game, where as you can see, stupid GameStop sticker. I, I, I got to take a blow dryer and just like scrape all of this off with Goo Gone someday. You can see a lot of these games are going to have GameStop stickers on them because I had no money. So like the only way I could get these games was through trading. And I had a no trading policy when it came to Vita games. But yeah, when it came to Persona 4 Golden, this was a title. Absolutely fantastic. Loved it to death one of my favorites of all time just a very wholesome story in a couple of ways uh the social links were very new to me kind of evolved how i think about jrpgs um so while putting it on pc hurt the price it was also helped by the cut of the psv to store that's incoming where now you're seeing this game go for well above 60 dollars at at minimum um, so this is a game that is highly sought after because it's like the definitive PS Vita game, but still, uh, it lost some of that price tag when it came to, of course, when it got put on PC, cause there was another way to access it that will likely be permanent for the future. Now, one of my favorite discoveries, if not my favorite discovery on the Vita, was the Danganronpa series. So we got Danganronpa 1, we got Danganronpa 2, we have Danganronpa V3, and then we have Ultra Despair Girls. So four Danganronpa games, all these originally exclusive on the Vita. So shout out to Nis America. They kept the Vita alive single-handedly for many years after its launch. They did a phenomenal job with it, and they helped publish all of these games. Uh, their murder mystery games, visual novel series, absolutely fantastic if you have not played them they're now available on ps4 but what's interesting is that the vita prices have not gone down so these three right here danganronpa 1 through v3 are actually about 300 dollars together this is what i mean these prices have gone up if you want to buy them in a bundle i don't know how much it goes for this one included this is kind of the uh the uh black sheep of the danganronpa series it's like a third person shooter that's not very good uh but still i have, I have a special place for it in my heart the point being is Danganronpa, I think, is best played on the Vita, and you'll notice that with some of these games. Is the reason you may want to collect them is because, yeah, you can get them on the PS4, but I don't know about all of you. I don't like playing visual novels and just reading pure text where I'm hunched over a computer. That's why I kind of skipped out on Disco Elysium. As cool as that game looked, I had no interest in playing it at the time because I thought to myself, well, I'm going to be humped over my computer just clicking text boxes. I would rather wait till I can play it on the go in some way, shape, or form, like with a Switch release. 
I have the same mentality for something like Danganronpa here. Uh, yeah, you can play it on the PS4, you can get the whole collection pretty easily, but for me, best way to play it is the Vita. So that's where some of the allure comes in with this console, is you get these great games that have been ported, kind of like what we saw with Persona 4 Golden, and arguably Persona 4 Golden is best played on the PC. You have the 60 FPS, it's got everything there from the original, um, so the only thing you're really missing is trophies, and, and technically you already got that with achievements. Um, but Danganronpa is one of those games you can also get on PC, but I think it's best played on the Vita. So if you become an avid supporter of it, these are kind of like must-owns in my opinion. But then there's what I like to call the stranded games on the platform, like these right here. So Tales of Hearts you actually could find on the DS, but the Tales of Hearts R, I believe, is only on the Vita. And it's, I think, best played on the Vita because the OLED screen kind of speaks for itself. Once again, trophy support speaks to a lot of people. There's also Freedom Wars. Uh, this was one of the last big exclusives that came out for the PlayStation Vita. This is a very cheap game to get, by the way. I remember one time I looked, it was going for five bucks complete in box, uh, which is kind of crazy because it's phenomenal in my opinion. So it is a Monster Hunter style game where you have been arrested and you go out and complete missions for a corporation. And as you complete them, you whittle away on your prison sentence. So it was once again, one of the last PS Vita exclusives. It came from Japan Studio. I thought it was excellent, uh, but once again, it's one of those games that is just stranded there on the platform. So there are still plenty of games releasing on the Vita and there are games that are still stuck there. Once again, best versions of the games. I talked about Danganronpa and I'm talking about Tales of Hearts. If you're a big Tales of fan, Tales of Hearts is really good. It's not the best one, but it's a JRPG there that you will find something to love with it. There's also stuff like Uncharted Golden Abyss. There's Resistance Burning Skies. Um, there are plenty of games, Killzone Mercenaries, another one, that are fantastic, that are only going up in price, but more importantly, are stranded on that console so there still is value to buy in there it's actually something that the psp has an issue with these are two phenomenal games on the psp crisis core long overdue to leave the psp and valkyrie profile Lanith, i would love to see leave the psp and somehow bring its way to ps4 to ps5 get more people in on these series i think crisis core is going to happen at some point in time but valkyrie profile Lanith just completely stranded over there and that makes the psp appealing but also when you look at the physical media and how you're not going to be able to download stuff yeah the price is going to get driven up on an already expensive game so that's part of the problem is yes you want to buy into these systems because these games are stranded but you want to get in early enough so you're not paying a astronomical price on these games once again uh home for vita is visual novel so this is the zero escape franchise uh, this is virtue's last reward what i think is the best uh, zero escape game uh, it is kind of a, once again a murder mystery game uh, where you're trying to get out of this facility and there's also puzzles involved that have you escaping rooms and honestly i'm gonna keep it real i played through this game i just went ahead and looked up puzzle walkthroughs and i just stayed for the story because it was that good uh, really mind-bending story really well done uh, crazy 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 stuff happens in this game uh, but once again one of those games that was not born on the vita but really caught a fan base on the vita and then was eventually ported do i think it's best played on the vita 100 percent but still Vita's home to a lot of visual novels. I enjoy them from time to time, not as often. And also, one underrated aspect I haven't talked about a lot in this video, but I brought one of my favorites out for it to wrap things up, is ports. So this is, I, I these stickers, these stickers, dude, like, ugh, God, it pisses me off. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is one of my favorite ports for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, it plays extremely well. It looks beautiful. Being able to play as Zero, I mean, I, I don't talk about it enough how much of a Mega Man fan I am, but being able to just play as Zero just oh, feels so nice. And so, I gotta say, I love this game a lot, and I think it's one of those situations where it's a port that you could argue is, in a lot of ways, best played on Vita, depending on how much you care about the competitive scene and stuff. I like the single-player component, doing arcade mode, just doing crazy matchups of different uh, members of the roster between Marvel and Capcom, and it's just cool that this exists, and honestly, now it's like one of the last good Marvel vs. Capcom <laughs> games when you look at Infinite, uh, but I just appreciate it so much and it looks beautiful it's got uh exclusive features on the vita like touch controls and stuff a lot of games kind of messed with that but eventually the vita's features started to become underutilized because people just wanted to play the games on them and that was it and so it made the vita a tough selling point when something like the ps4 
came into play which also brings us to remote play remote play was a thing for a while but ultimately those are just the games i had to show you all um they go for a variety of prices like ultimate marvel versus capcom 3 i got it for as we can see on the price tag i got it for uh 27 because i was a pro member at gamestop at the time and uh, that definitely goes for 60 bucks plus so all these games are are going up in price you can find them at cheap deals on ebay if you want to put an offer in sometimes that doesn't work uh you can only haggle so much and mercari is another great place i believe that's how you pronounce it um that's another great place where some people are just looking to off lift stuff that's where i got my uh, burning skies copy uh, i got it for 20 bucks and it normally goes for about 35 40 so you can get some pretty good deals from people who just want to get rid of stuff uh, so keep a lookout but i just wanted to put some love on uh, what I think is one of the best systems and just encourage more people to give it a shot. There are some really worthwhile games on it. Um, there are some really phenomenal titles that were born there and I think are best played there. And it's only gonna become more hard to find. So you may look at some of these prices and go, oh, 80, that's a lot. That can go up to 100 and then that's too much, right? So if you are interested in collecting, which I know my channel is not known for game collecting, but if you are interested in this stuff, you know, it's become a big hobby of mine. I do think that this type of stuff is worth the dive uh, because you'll just eventually regret it, right? They're not going to be printing more of copies of these games. They're not going to be producing more. Uh, they're only going to become more hard to find and they're only going to go up in price. And that's why I want to remove the stickers because as you get rid of these stickers and you keep them in good condition, uh, their prices will only raise because kind of like Game Boy Advance games, uh, when the boxes are in good condition, that can add a ton of value to it. Uh, just like what we had here with Unit 13, Unit 13 had Having the online passcode in it uh, believe it or not this will actually bump up the value of the game because some people myself included like when the little slips and everything that was there at launch is there in the box so whenever i crack this open and decide hey i want to play unit 13 i can open it and say oh yeah i remember that when i saw the online passcode it all came crashing back so I uh, just wanted to make this kind of random offshoot video. Don't know how well it'll do, but um, I wanted to give the Vita some love. I thought it was important given the news and, and put it on your radar. Because a lot of people appreciated what I said about the Steelbook for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Like, hey, if you care about physical copies, you should get this now because it's going to go up in price. So I figured kind of in line with that, I would guide you once more to the best of my abilities. So for those of you out there who are Vita collectors, who are PSP collectors, leave your advice and your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you make of what's happening now with the digital stores? Where do you anticipate prices are going to go? What games would you suggest collecting? Let me know because I'm personally looking to do that myself. When I got my Vita for my girlfriend, I was like, oh my God, I got to start collecting for this thing because I want to use this more. Uh, this is the slim Vita, by the way. And so it doesn't have the OLED screen, it's an L LCD screen, um, but it got me in the mood to start collecting again and you know picking out as many good deals as I can. So I'm on the prowl as well for good deals for my Vita game. So let me know what you all find in the comments down below. Looking forward to seeing what you all share. And with that, it's time for me to sign out. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.